they can on the other team. And there you see the, the, the Spanish lineup. And as I said, the Zarzuela brothers are the big stars for there. Alejandro is leading them in scoring and rebounding. Pablo is second in scoring and adds four and a half rebounds and four and a half assists a game. But really the key for Jose Manuel Artacho's team, maybe Asier Garcia, who's co-captain with Carlos Vera today. Garcia as the point guard has been getting nine assists, seven and a half rebounds and seven points a game, a valuable contribution. And they do have a deep bench. And for Germany, well, Burma came through with 23 points, 13 rebounds, seven assists in the big win over Brazil that got them into the fourth qualifying spot. Haluski, 17 points and 10 boards. Benek, 13 and eight. Those are the three guys they will go with, but they got a great contribution from Haller, nine points four rebounds and five assists in that game, all of which were well above his average. And the problem for Germany may simply be the lack of depth, especially with big men. They will count on Passawan off the bench to give them points, but not necessarily a big presence inside. Sticks, the Zarzuela twins, Asier Garcia, and the shooter, David Moriz, will be the starting lineup for Spain, but they can bring Ruiz and Diallo, two big men off the bench. And for Germany, Haluski in the middle, Benek, Lohmann, Haller, and Burma. So really a lot will depend on that battle inside, but Alexandra, Alexander against Alejandro, the two Alexes going up against each other inside, Haluski and Zarzuela. Haluski is the better shooter Zarzula is probably the stronger rebounder and defensive player. There you see Spain's results, and they got through in Group A in a three-way tie with Turkey and Australia. The tie was decided, all had records of four and one. The tie was decided by the scoring margin in games between those three teams. Germany, meanwhile, had to beat Brazil in that last game, 73-61, in order to get through over Iran, who beat them in their first game. Um, and as the final qualifier, they needed to have that two and three record to move in ahead of Iran. So Spain beat Australia by 11. Australia beat Turkey by two, and then Turkey beat Spain by three. So the points differential wound up with Spain being plus eight in those three matches, Australia being plus one, and Turkey being minus nine thanks to that 11-point loss to, uh, excuse me, th thanks to um, the, big, the big loss to Spain. And that's the way they qualified, one, two, three. Bill Kurzel from the US is the referee. He's the one with the ball. Krunoslav. Heitch and Alexander Laplante are the other two officials, the umpires. So number one in group A against number four in group B. Four and one team against a two and three team. Spain in white, Germany in black. And Haluski in the center for the opening tap. It's a tip in AV basketball, it's a tap in wheelchair basketball. The rules of the game are virtually identical to AV basketball, with the exception, of course, of the chairs. The dribble rule is you have to dribble for each two pushes of your chair, and watch carefully because maneuvers of the chair count as pushes. In other words, when you're turning the chair, that would count as one push, and if you turn it back, that's two pushes. So if you don't use your dribble at that point, you can be called for traveling. The other rules are pretty much the same. You have eight seconds to bring the ball across the halfway line. You have 24 seconds, including that eight, to get off a shot. You have only three seconds to plant yourself in the paint in the key area, which is painted green on the floor, or you lose the ball on a three-second violation. And Zarzula controls the tap straight to a Garcia. It was Garcia through whom everything will work for Spain. And right away he drives down on Lohmann, misses the shot, but draws the foul on Lohmann with the chair. And he'll go to the foul line. Teams get four fouls in each quarter. 
before the penalty situation. Once they enter the penalty situation with the fifth foul, most foul shots will be shot, whether or not the player fouled was in the act of shooting, as Garcia was when he was fouled here. He makes the first shot. Garcia, Garcia, he cans them both. It's 2-0 Spain over Germany. Mourez coming up to a little harassment in the backcourt. Germany gets it up easily enough to Burma. He's their big scorer. Ken Haller sets the pick for him. And we have a foul on Pedro Zarzula. And right away, we have a wheel off. And well, we have the rubber off the wheel. Haluski trying to get the attention to put put the tire back on the wheel. And instead, they're going to just bring him a new wheel, do it the easy way. And he just snaps that new wheel in, and we're ready to go. 13 seconds left on the shot clock from Germany after the foul. Holler will do a lot of play there at, at the high post, the old traditional high post position, and Germany can't get the shot off before the buzzer. The desperation heave was pretty close, but it came after the buzzer anyway. It would not have counted had it gone through. And the possession goes over to Spain now with a 2-0 lead still in the first minute of the game. See it picks something up off the court. Garcia from the foul line, short, and the rebound taken by Haluski. He drops it off to Benek, and Benek comes down now with Holler ahead of him. There's the cut. He's got two cutters going toward the basket, but Holler is left all alone on the baseline. His shot is high, but Haluski was there for the rebound and puts it in, and we're tied at two. And that's what Germany needs for Haluski to get inside and do the work there. Long outside shot by Morez missed, but Alejandro is underneath and he gets the rebound in. And that, as I said, this could be the key matchup of the game is Alejandro against Alexander. Alejandro Zazula against Alexander Haluski. Four to two, Spain. Holler, a little bit outside his normal area at the three point line. That was a loose pass. Garcia nearly got his hands to it. But it comes back now to Benek. He leans forward, gets the left-handed layup, and see how Spain try to trap him back in the defensive zone. And Zarzula just staying in front of him to make sure he can get down first. Give them a man advantage. Garcia comes all the way in, pass to Pablo, and he puts it in six to four. Nicely done. Garcia drawing defenders to him, finds the open man cutting, and hits him for the easy layup. Six to four, Spain now. Seven and a half to play. Holler, great pass inside to Benek, and he misses the layup, but Haluski's there. Spanish are really harassing him, but he gets the shot off, and it's good. Just a correction on the opening uh, possession for Germany. There was not a foul. The stoppage was simply for the wheel change for Haluski, and Pedro Zarzula had raised his hand. We've got a two-on-one right here. Mourez moving behind the screen, but that's a block by Haluski, and then Pedro picks up the loose ball, and he puts it in. It's eight to six. And uh, Pedro raised his hand, but he was just signaling for the stoppage to replace the wheel. Cross court now to Benek. Haluski sets a screen for him. It's a three if it goes. It doesn't, and the rebound comes off to Steeks, who passes it immediately to Garcia. Garcia now bringing it up for Spain. 
cut off by Benek. Inside to Alejandro, he's been in the three second area a long time. He throws an air ball up and Haluski picks it up and you can see them counting the eight seconds, the referee with his arm, that's four, five. They're across easily. They've been calling three seconds very tightly at times in this tournament, but not consistently. And that's a huge, huge three. Benek, high arcing shot for three, and Germany goes into the lead nine to eight. What a shot. Garcia comes right down, and that one's taken away by Haluski. It was intended for Pedro, and the turnover now quickly. Benek and Haller come up two on two. Benek had Buma cutting through. Now who's going to come down the lane? No one. There goes Buma, cross court to Halek, back to Benek, another three for him, and off the glass, that one. He put it behind the basket, it goes straight in off the glass. It's 12-8 Germany, two three-point shots in a row. From Andre Benek. Garcia now settling things down for Spain. He's got Alejandro. Alejandro misses but gets his own rebound. Lots of time and set it up and he draws the foul as the shot hit the bottom of the rim. But Burma is going to get the foul. That'll be the first on Germany and Alejandro will go to the line to shoot two. Just at the halfway point of the first quarter, 12-8 to Germany. Identical twins, Pedro and Alejandro Zazula. And makes the second, it's 12-9. Spain picking up at the three-quarter mark, but Benek brings it up and they retreat back. Benek now, they're clearing out one side of the court. He's alone with Garcia, Haluski, with a very high screen. Goes down to Burma, across to Haluski. Shot is good, and there was a foul. I think the foul will be on sticks. And Haluski, from the foul line, extended 14 to nine for Germany. Shot goes out, and Alejandro with the rebound. Garcia moving very fluidly. Holler cuts him off, but he goes inside Holler. There's a foul, and the basket is good. So it'll be a three-point play possible for Garcia now. You saw how he was going to his left, then cut to the right to get around Holler before Holler could move his chair. Take a look at that move there and Holler was blocked out by Styx. So he couldn't move the chair to his left because Styx was there. Garcia, he goes in and out, and Benek with the rebound. So it's 14-11 now. Germany over Spain by three with four and a half to play in the first period, and Benek brings it up for Germany, and he's got a path, and Styx did a great job there of catching up and cutting him off. But Benek went right to the hoop and got the ball. It's knocked away from him by Morez, and Germany will get possession back, but with only eight seconds on the shot clock. High inbound pass to Benek. He's hit two threes already, and he was thinking about a third. Nearly lost it to Morez again. Cross court to Haluski. He's not going to get the shot off, and for the second time in the quarter, the 24 second clock beats Germany and they turn it over to Spain with four minutes to play in the first quarter. Garcia was thinking about the long shot. He's wheeling in now into the lane, gets out of it. And Alejandro off the front rim, but he gets the foul again. There's the foul by Holler, hand on the arm. And Alejandro Zarzula is so strong. 
the hand on the arm may have interfered. He, hit the, he did hit the front rim rather than put the shot in. And he makes both foul shots. 14-13, a one-point game. Germany up by one, under four minutes to play in the first quarter. A little bit of pressure now from Spain. Pedro coming over quickly on Benek. Haluski gives it back to Benek. Burma coming down on the side, now goes inside. He gets the pass, set up on the baseline. The shot will be long. Oh, it drops in. It took, it hit the, it hit the stanchion that the basket is attached to and then took a bounce through the hoop. 16-13. And the offensive foul was called on Sticks. That's his second and the team's second. He was blocking in the backcourt on the inbound pass. Haluski in the paint now driving, and it's blocked by Alejandro. Haluski again, it's short. Alejandro knocked the rebound loose, and Garcia picked it up, and Morez brings it up for Spain. Long pass to Pedro, who's set up underneath, and Pedro draws the foul, which I believe will be on Benek. Somewhat good-natured, and, and all the competition here in the wheelchair basketball tournament has been remarkably good-natured. Apart, possibly, from when Australia has been playing. Pedro misses the first. And misses the second, but Garcia gets the rebound for Spain and gets it to Morez. Morez with the pass into Alejandro in the paint, and Alejandro puts that one in. And interesting, they are letting them sit in the paint for the moment. Sooner or later, someone's going to get called for a three-second violation. Be interesting to see when that happens. But and Garcia draws the foul as he bumped Lumen out of bounds. That's the team's third. Germany is already in the penalty situation. The next foul would be shot by Spain, regardless of whether it's a shooting foul or not, unless it's an offensive foul. Burma from the outside hits the three, 19 to 15. Four point lead for Germany with two and a half to play in the quarter. Garcia nearly loses the ball, picks it back up. 14 on the shot clock. Out to Morez. Morez will shoot for three. He's off and Holler pulls the rebound down in front of Zarzula. Burma. Holler. Haluski. Back to Burma. Trying to come inside. Holler at the foul line. Eight on the clock into, Halu into Burma, who was driving down. He missed the shot. Garcia with a long outlet pass. Morez was basket hanging, and he's got the layup. It's 19-17. Catches the German defenders napping. He was going as soon as the shot was in the air, and Garcia saw him. One-on-one -on -one opportunity for Burma with Garcia. Good bit of D from Garcia. Now he gets the pick from Benek, but he can't go through there. Benek now, oh, good job by Alejandro to cover Benek, but Benek gets the left-handed shot away. It misses, and the rebound by Styx handed to Garcia, who will bring it up with a minute 16 to play, trailing by two. Garcia had Maurice underneath. Now it goes to Alejandro. He misses the shot, and Haluski with the rebound. Quick outlet pass to Benek. Garcia is back, and Sticks gets back very quickly. Morez cuts off Haluski. And Benek is down and called for an offensive foul. No, excuse me. He's called for a travel. Garcia brings it up with 50 seconds to go. Into Alejandro. 
And Alejandro ties the game at 19 with 40 seconds to go. And that's still for Germany going to be the big problem. They're getting the ball inside pretty much at will to Alejandro or Pedro Zarzula. And Germany have been keeping in the game with shooting from the outside. Benek to Burma. Holler. See Spain has cut the lane off on both sides. Benek has to shoot, there's two on the clock and he hits it just before the clock expires, 21-19 for Germany. Garcia with four, Merez picking for him, Garcia fires it into Alejandro and his shot misses at the buzzer and that will leave the score at the end of the first quarter and a very good first quarter it was Alejandro looking for the foul call that he did not get but at the end of the first quarter a Germany 21 Spain 19 and if you look tactically at what's going on you'd have to give the advantage to Spain even though they're down by two because what they're doing is getting the ball inside consistently to the Zarzuela brothers and getting the easy baskets there. That may be reflected in the shooting percentage as well. They're actually pretty much even. Spain slightly better on the twos, but Germany three out of four from three points. That's why they are in the lead. Everything else is pretty much even. Even the rebounding is even, but Germany are making the outside shots at the moment. The odds of their continuing to do that throughout the game are smaller than the odds of Spain continuing to rack up points inside with Pedro and Alejandro. This is a fascinating tactical matchup. But right now, the upper hand belongs to Germany just by a fingertip. 21-19, they lead Spain. Twenty-one nineteen, Germany over Spain in this quarterfinal matchup at Men's Wheelchair Basketball Rio 2016 Paralympics here at the Rio Olympic Arena, the biggest indoor arena in Rio de Janeiro, built for the Pan American Games in 2007. Basketball took place here and at the Carioca Arena 1, just a couple of hundred meters away in the preliminary rounds, but now all of the knockout competition will be here in the bigger Rio Olympic arena. Love the sight lines in this place. It's high, high stands. Each level you get great views and great crowds we've had here too in this tournament as Germany begin with Haluski and it goes in and out and the rebound to Sticks and he hands it right to Asier Garcia. Garcia has been the motor of the Spanish attack and right now Garcia is set for a shot and it's gonna be an offensive Foul on Morez. And the ball will go over to Germany. That's his first and the team's first. Morez saw crashing into Passawan. Passawan is in for Germany. He's their best bench player and gives him, he's a good shooter, gives him instant offense when he comes in. Jesus Romero, now that's an interesting one because Romero hasn't played all that much, only six minutes a game. And usually the first big man off the bench would be Ruiz and then Alejos or Diallo. They've got lots of bigs, and what a great shot that was from Benek, and he has been hot. He's got 12 of Germany's 23. They lead by four. What well, Ruiz is in, you can see there, and they get it into Alejandro. As Morez takes over the feeding role. And he's got, Alejandro's got 11. So Benek, Passawan, gets the cross-court pass. Alejandro comes out on him, but he just shoots over him. I said he can, he, when he's hot, he's hot. And instant offense from Dirk Passawan, the veteran at 39 years old, second oldest player on the team. Ruiz's shot misses, and Haluski with the rebound. Haluski off to Benek. 
Dreimuller is in for Germany. You see him now going toward the, sorry, that's not Dreimuller, it's Heimbach. And Heimbach puts in the layup. Heimbach came right down that line and then kept going as the defender came out, had the easy path for the layup, and that's 27-21. That's the kind of stuff Germany need to do more of keep the Spanish defense honest. Ruiz now moves for the shot behind Pedro's screen and Passawan gets the rebound for Germany. Right now Spain is shooting from the outside. They want to be inside. That's where their points come from. And that pass, well, it was optimistic, intended for Haluski, but taken away by Alejandro. And he puts it up to Ruiz and Ruiz loses it off his chair. And another turnover and the ball goes to Germany and Benek will inbound for them in front of the German bench. Well, he started, he started the count for eight before the ball was even inbound. He was counting the three to release the ball, the five to release the ball, excuse me. A lot of counting when you're a referee. Benek with another high arcing shot, and there's a foul called. And the foul's on Romero. Now, I suspect Romero was brought in for his defense she saw him come right out quickly on Benek. And Zazuela's uh, underneath the basket. Benek makes the first foul shot. And Germany pulling everybody back, uh, which is a sign of confidence, I think, in Benek's foul shooting. He makes the second, 29-21. Germany have pushed up an eight-point lead now on Spain with seven minutes and 30 seconds to play in the half. Romero, he penetrates, dishes to Pedro. Pedro shot misses Passawan with the rebound. Passawan as Ruiz comes out on him. Benek for three hit the back and the rebound by Ruiz. It was taken away by Haluski. He saved it to Benek, 12 on the shot clock. Benek looking for Passawan to come over. He's got a little bit of a screen and it hit the rim and bounced away and Alejandro with the rebound. Ruiz brings it down to Pedro. Back to Ruiz. Romero in the other corner. Misses and Haluski with the rebound. He was the only one there. Passawan. Good job by Morez to come up and harass him. Nice pass right into the arms of Haluski. Good defense by Romero who cut him off. So he spun around and found Benek. And there's only nine on the shot clock. Because Spain did a good job of making it difficult for the Germans to bring the ball up. And as Benek spun around to make that pass, his chair went over the inbound line and possession will go over to Spain trailing by eight now oh, excuse me they called a foul on Zarzuela on Alejandro Benek now Mariz cuts him off to Haluski in the paint Haluski shot misses and the rebound by Pedro Zarzuela sorry by Alejandro up to a brother Pedro fast break basket is missed by Ruiz by Romero and Ruiz picks up the foul under the basket trying to block Haluski. There it is and the foul called on Ruiz as Haluski was moving into position and Ruiz came and cut him off and, and you can see what coach Artacho is saying the two guys hit each other and it's given an unsportsmanlike foul so Haluski gets two shots and Germany will keep possession. And unless it wasn't a technical, he didn't seem to say anything. Unless, but unless he did, it seems very harsh for that kind of foul. It wasn't like Haluski was with the ball or alone inside, but that was what the call was. Haluski made one of the two free throws. It's 30 to 21, and Germany will keep possession. Now, I talked about the Spanish depth, and they're bringing substitutes in. Now, Garcia is coming back into the game. Diallo, the big man in the back, is coming in as well, and Sanchez is up top, number eight. 
Tasawan on the baseline. Garcia has a lovely pass. And Haluski missed the shot. You can see him, and he's trapped in the back now by Pedro and by Diallo. So when Spain come up now, it's, it's four on four, and the foul is going to be on Benek as he knocks Sanchez's chair. Right there. Sanchez was trying to set the screen. Benek trying to fight his way through the screen. It's a very, very physical game, as you can see. Sanchez to inbound. Underneath, Garcia into Alejandro. And, and you see the difference when Garcia is in immediately because Garcia is able to thread those passes through to get them up where Alejandro can take them uncontested, up above his head, basically. And Garcia has no hesitation of doing that. He knows even if there's a player there, Alejandro can still get the ball. Look at how they collapse on Haluski. And the foul's called on Ruiz, I believe. But they had three players around Haluski. They simply collapsed on him as soon as he got the ball. And again, not, not a situation where you want to give the foul because Haluski was having, would have trouble getting a good shot off anyway. And now Haluski will shoot two more. In and out. And Garcia applauds that. And Haluski misses the second one as well. So Garcia put the hex on him. It's 30 to 23 at the halfway point of the second quarter. Germany over Spain. And Germany, well, you want to be shooting better than 43% on your free throws. Garcia, that was nicely done by Diallo, and he gets the pass back as Garcia drops it. Long time in the paint, misses the shot. Pasawan now, and he's got the break on with Haluski. Haluski holds up as Sanchez did a nice job of getting in front of him. They give it to Benek, and Pedro is there. Cross court to Pasawan. Alejandro comes out on him. Now they, now they can look inside to Haluski, which is what they do, but Diallo gets his hand on it. Four seconds on the shot clock. Possession will be with Germany, and they'll only have three seconds to get a shot away. And a timeout on the floor taken up by Germany. They lead Spain 30 to 23 with four and a half minutes to play in the second quarter and three seconds left on the shot clock when they get the ball back. It's very interesting the way the Spanish are putting pressure on Haluski, collapsing on him inside, making it difficult for him to get position inside, making every shot he takes a real exercise in getting his hands free. Pasawan hits a three, again off the boards. That's the second time they've gotten the bounce off the backboard for the straight on three. And Germany are up by 10, 33 to 23. And well, taking the time out to draw up the play for Pasawan paid off as he cans the three. Pedro to Garcia to Alejandro. He misses the first one and hits the second. So pretty by Spain. And that's Garcia's touch. Alejandro wants a foul again. I think he wants a foul each time, but but you know, really you see the difference in Spain when Garcia is in and when he isn't. Well, the pass outside went to nobody really, but Pasawan gathered it in. Benek spins around trying to get a quick shot off, but Pedro is there. And then all alone on the other side, and in and out is the shot by Heimbach. 33-25. 
Garcia. And every, look at that, one, two, three, four, five, six chairs all in the paint at once there. And the foul is on Heinbach. Bluma comes back in for Germany. Ben X going to get the rest. Garcia for three. And the rebound finally comes to Pasawan. It was knocked away from him by Alejandro Zarzula. Pasawan just said, he hit my hand. <laughs> he seemed to hit it pretty hard as well. Oh, nice move by Pasawan. A stop and go. All alone is Heimbach, and it, it rims the basket and comes out. And here comes Germany again. Garcia. Alejandro, and it's going to be a foul called on Holuski. Burma says, I don't need the, the hand. He gets himself up with his chair. Uh, the foul's on Burma from behind. Pedro misses them both, but, sorry, Alejandro misses them both, gets the rebound, and his... The foul was on Haluski there for a push, which I don't see, but there you go. They had him trapped in the corner. There was no need to push. There was nothing much that he could do. There didn't seem to be any motion of Haluski's chair, but he's called for the foul, 33-25. Pedro Zarzula now. Garcia at the foul line, and he doesn't miss that. 33-27, six-point lead with two and a half to play in the half. Heimbach brings it up for Germany. Pass on. Bruma spins, nice spin. Garcia gets ahead of him, but look at how Alejandro came up. Haluski, though, and that was worked beautifully. As soon as Alejandro came up to get Burma, he dropped the bounce pass to Haluski, who laid it in. It's 35-27. You see how they try to keep Haluski into the backcourt for as long as possible. Garcia, that empty space where Haluski would have been, Garcia moves right down through it and gets the pass, puts in the layup, and it's, again, a six-point game with under two minutes to play in the first half. Good reactions by both teams, reading the game. Good pass to Burma, back from Passawan. He gets set up for the shot and doesn't get the fall, but Haluski gets the rebound and puts it in. 37-29. Gets a little bumping congratulations as they try to free, them, free themselves in the backcourt. And there's a whistle. Everybody on Spain is pointing into the forecourt, but the whistle is in the backcourt. And it's an eight-second violation. On Spain. And you could argue that they spent so much time trying to keep Haluski in the backcourt that they forgot about bringing the ball up quickly enough. Diallo changes the wheel and comes in. Passawan shoots a three. 
and makes it. It's 40 to 29. And Dirk Passawan has done exactly what he's there to do. Come off the bench in the second quarter and add offense with deadly shooting. Garcia now brings it down. There's Pedro and Pedro lays it in. It's what the Spanish game has to be. They've got the muscle inside with the Zarzula brothers. There's the steal by Pedro. Pedro laying that one in. It misses, but there is a foul, and the foul is going to be on Lohman. And now there's a timeout on the court called by Spain. And with 41 seconds left in the game, I think what they're going to do is, is press after the foul shot comes off, try to get one more possession out of it. 40 to 31, Germany leads Spain with 41 seconds remaining in the half. So pa Pablo Zarzuela. <laughs> Makes the second one. Let's see. No, Spain retreat back. It's 40 to 32, an eight point game with 39 seconds left. So the plan must have been for the last shot of the quarter after this German possession, which has 11 seconds left on the shot clock. Oh, good Heimbach, and his sh shot is short. They've got 21 seconds now, but they get it up quickly with the basket hang, and Pablo puts it in for Spain. Six-point game. That's a crucial basket for them, and Germany, well, I'm sure the Spanish said, look, whatever happens, we want that. Passawan's three is not going to go. Garcia with the full court heave is short. And that brings a excellent first half and high scoring first half to an end. And Germany leads Spain 40 to 34. This is about as good a half as Germany has played in this tournament. And well, you can see what Holler is, is saying to Heimbach. Heimbach has had three very good shots. He's one for four from the floor so far, but his last three shots have all been really good ones, and he's failed to hit them. And Haller, I think, saying, don't worry about it. You'll get them in the second half, because if the Germans can work the ball to get Heimbach and Haller the good shots, that's going to be a real plus for them, as Spain is shutting them, the big men down inside for the most part. And if you look at the statistical breakdown, it's fairly even, but the reason Germany are in the lead by six is the three-point shooting. Five out of eight, and that includes Passawan's miss there in the final period. Benek two of four, Passawan two of three, Burma one of one, five out of eight in the half. That's 15 points, and that's a good return from eight shots anyway you look at it. At halftime, Germany 40, Spain 34.
Welcome back to the Rio Olympic Arena and halftime of a first quarter final in men's wheelchair basketball. And at the half, Germany leads Spain 40 to 34. It was a great first half for the Germans where lots went right for them, particularly outside shooting and particularly three point shooting as they, they shot five out of eight from behind the three point arc. That's where their six point lead comes from. But the strategy of the game remains the same in the second half. Spain are trying to work for points inside with the big Zarzuela brothers. And when Garcia is in the game for Spain at the point, they seem to be able to get the ball to them pretty much at will. When Garcia was out, it became a little more difficult. The Germans trying to force Spain out, but not having much love luck with that. Haluski, the German big man, is always being stopped. And there we start the second half the same way the Spanish started the first. Alejandro, he misses two. The second one may have been blocked. It's a jump ball. And the possession arrow is pointing in Germany's favor, so they will get the ball. And the next 50-50 ball will go to Spain. That includes the inbounds at the between the quarters. Burma in the middle to Haluski. You see how they collapse on him, but Haluski with a couple of arm fakes makes room for the shot and it is 42-34. But as Spain is concentrating inside, Germany has been able to shoot outside and Garcia, well, that's his spot too, that corner of the foul lane and he hits the two, 42-36. They haven't had Merez shooting much from the outside when he was in. And right now, with Diallo in, they've got the, the big. Goes across to Holler. And Holler from way outside on the baseline hits. I told you he had a big game in the must-win game against Brazil, the final match of the qualifying round, the preliminary round, and Holler had nine in that one. Garcia again penetrates. He's in the three-point pain. He has to back up and get out of it. Alejandro doesn't, and they pass the ball to him, and his shot hits the side of the backboard. And Burma with the rebound. He needs help there, but there's a foul. It's going to be Sanchez with the foul reaching in on Burma. And that was a lucky break because he would have had to turn around to see where his help was. And there was really nowhere, look at him, nowhere for him to turn. So giving that foul away was not the right move for Spain. Holler was alone, but he gets it to Haluski. Back to Holler at the free throw line. Haluski cut to the basket. Holler found him. Can Haluski get the rebound? No, it's taken away from him by Alejandro Zarzula. And he quickly gets it out to brother Pablo. Pablo on the baseline to his brother in the middle. No basket. The foul came before the shot. And now Alejandro wants to make the point that he deserves the, the foul on the shot. Garcia, he was in the paint a long time and makes the basket 48 to 44, sorry, to 38. Benek now moves up quickly. Diallo comes out on him. Here's the pass to Haluski quickly before Spain could get set up. And with Diallo out, he just had Pablo to beat, and he did with the layup, 46-38. Germany answering Spain basket for basket here and keep the lead at eight. Garcia again penetrates. Sanchez, he's got the open shot and it won't fall.
Haller. Oh, that's a good lead pass for Burma. He swings around as Haluski was trapped by Diallo and there was no, no pass available to him. Burma it gets over Garcia, comes back out to Haller with two on the shot clock. Then it, that shot was partially blocked. And the long pass down court is intercepted by Haluski. And there's a foul on Sanchez as he gave Haluski a little bump as he went past. Didn't see what happened with Haluski's interception, but did get a good close up of Coach Zeltinger's face. Holler from the foul line. Can't get the roll, but the basket, the rebound is tipped back out to him. Benek is kind of trapped, now gets out of the paint. That pass was deflected, but Benek took it. Tried to feed it into Haluski, but Diallo alertly blocked that one off. Was picked up by Garcia and up to Pablo. Pablo to brother Alejandro. Has the size advantage, shoots over Burma, but the shot misses and Burma gets the rebound and comes down for Germany now. Three on four. Haluski at the foul line and he hits. 48-38, 10 point game, five and a half to play in the third. And Haluski, well, because they're shutting him off outside, inside, he can come outside to get the shots before they react. Garcia brings it down. He has Diallo. That was lovely. And Diallo is fouled by Benek. But that was lovely. Diallo just moved right in front of him. Garcia sees him coming. And Garcia's got great vision on the court. Gets the pass right into him. And Benek had no choice but to foul. Benek has three fouls now at the halfway point of the third period. You foul out with five. And Diallo's shot is in and out. Misses the second as well. Benek gets the rebound. We saw Lohman working hard to keep Diallo back, but Diallo's now down into Hal and Haluski. He was triple teamed, lost the ball, and Diallo picked it up. Garcia, Alejandro, and Diallo all there as Haluski got the ball close to the basket. Now they've trapped Alejandro, but he gets out of it, gets out of it again. He's got a path to the basket, drops it to brother Pablo, and, Bob and Pablo lays it in. Nice work. He knew someone had to be open because so many players were defending him. And he cuts off Burma. He's trying to get offensive position. Holler. Burma back to Holler. Benek. He has Haluski setting the pick there. It's a long shot, and it's good. Benek shoots with the highest arc of, I think, anybody in the tournament. And if you take two basketballs, you can actually fit them through the rim if you put them side by side. So when, you're, when your shot is coming down from high arc, it actually has a better chance of finding the center of the ring and not hitting it, and not hitting one of, bit, one of the bits of the rims, which are very tight here. Pablo from the outside matches Benek's shot. It's still an eight-point game under four minutes to play in the third. Benek driving to the hoop, misses the layup. Well, he made a great, a great drive, had room for himself, put it up right-handed, missed it, and Garcia comes down for Spain. Watch Alejandro on the other side of the court. He's cut off by Bennett. Now Diallo gives him a path. They get it to him, and there's a foul. Fouls on Lohman. But you could see you could see that one develop. And Diallo with the good pick gave Alejandro a path to the basket. Garcia got him the pass, but Lohman committed the foul. That was his third and the team's third. 
in this quarter. Garcia now with 10 on the shot clock. Haluski. Menek looking to help him out against Alejandro, but now Diallo comes free and Diallo puts it in. Just ahead of the 24 second buzzer. And it's a six point game, 50 to 44. Benek. Haluski with the pick for him. Burma back to Benek. Nothing going, eight on the shot clock. Burma now on the outside. Can't get a good shot away. Haluski inside, has to shoot quickly and misses. Garcia with the rebound. Great defense by Spain. Great team defense there. Keeping the Germans to the outside. There was no penetration, zero penetration. They barely beat the shot clock. Garcia comes down all on his own. Now gets one more dribble, misses the shot, and the rebound taken by Haller. And quickly down the court comes Benek, and he's fouled by Alejandro Zarzula. That's the team's third. So both teams at three fouls now. And it's Zar Zarzula's second. 17 on the shot clock left for Germany. It's mostly been Binek. And there's a foul outside. And it was Pablo Garcia. Swap pa <laughs> Garcia. Pablo. <laughs> This is Arzula committing the foul. So the shot clock will reset to 14 after the foul. See if Germany can get any penetration at all. Burma now, he's one-on-one -on -one with Sanchez, but Garcia comes right down to help. Benek again on the outside. Haluski lost the ball at the foul line. There's a fast break available for Pablo, and Pablo is going to lay it in, and it's a four-point game. 50 to 46, just under two minutes to play in the quarter, and Germany need a timeout with 1.57 on the clock. And you, can, you know what they're going to talk about. The Spanish defense is keeping them out of the paint. They're keeping them out of the inside. They're not getting second shots. They're not getting good first shots at the moment. And Spain are reacting to those bad shots. They're reacting to turnovers. And they're coming down quickly, getting the ball inside for the easy shots. And right now, well, I'm not sure what the strategy can be here. for Germany. They've switched, they've switched through a couple of players. Heimbach for Haller. Passawan has come in to give Wimmer and uh, Binek uh, a bit of a rest. But otherwise, there haven't been many substitutions for them. And they don't have really another big man to give Haluski a break and to compete inside with with that massive size advantage that Spain have with the Zarzula brothers, with Garcia, who's pretty big, with Diallo, who's very big, and even with other bench players like Ruiz, who can come in and give them minutes inside. So as I said, Germany has to keep shooting well. Spain just has to keep getting the ball inside. But if Germany are forced to take long shots all the time, and Passawan has come back in for Germany, Heimbach has come in with him. That's a better shot for Haluski, but still out at the foul line. There's no black jersey underneath for the rebound, and Spain come down trailing by four with a minute and a half, and Garcia, when he penetrates, but things open up for the big men, and, well, what a great play by, ha by Burma to knock that ball away, and it's a three-second violation. And that's our first three-second call of the game, I believe, certainly the first of this half. see both both Alejandro and Diallo planted in the paint minute and a half to play now in the third four point game Germany and Spain and Germany right now just having problems trying to figure out the Spanish defense Passawan's pass it was partly blocked by Diallo and here comes Garcia he had Diallo and Alejandro coming down 
Pablo sets the pick for Garcia, and that'll be a foul on Heimbach, who hit Garcia's chair hard as he came in trying to go for the steal. That's the fourth team foul on Germany, so that puts them in the penalty situation now. And Heimbach, well, Garcia had a pretty good path toward the basket had he not been fouled, so it's a good foul to give away while you can. Both teams are in the penalty situation. Garcia, well, it was pretty much an open free throw because Heimbach is in front of him, but Heimbach not tall enough to challenge the actual shot, and we have a two-point game now. Germany 50, Spain 48, Passawan brings it up. Diallo whacks him with the chair, and he'll draw the foul. <laughs> and he'll go to the line as they're in the penalty situation. If you're going to foul, make it a good one. And that was a good one from Amadou Diallo. Passawan makes the shot. Diallo, uh, Garcia, and Juarez all play for Bilbao in the Spanish League. Misses the second, and there's no one there to rebound for Germany. Diallo pulls the rebound down. It's Germany by three with 40 seconds left in the half, and Garcia bringing the ball up. Pablo, Diallo screens for him. Got a lot of time for that shot. Misses, and the rebound to Haluski quickly over to Pasawan. And you just look for the Germans. Who is going to go inside apart from Haluski? That's the problem. Who can compete inside? They set up a double screen for Haluski. And he, hink, he cans the shot from the outside. So still the outside shooting for Germany, keeping them in the lead by five. And you see the, you see Coach Seidinger telling everyone to get back, get back with three seconds. Garcia will take the last shot of the game. It's a two if it goes, and it doesn't. Haluski knocks the rebound away and slaps hands with Passawan. Well, and so the foul and Haluski's shot put Germany in, up from two points. The lead goes up to five, but Spain slowly but surely grinding them down. They won the third quarter by one point, and they've narrowed the margin to five. At the end of three quarters, it is 53 to Germany, 48 to Spain, and there's 10 minutes of tough basketball left to play. And, well, still looking at those stats, Germany only got one three-pointer off and missed it. The shooting percentage slightly behind Spain. But now the rebounding advantage still hasn't come up. The points from turnover is still pretty even. And uh, really, there is no difference between these two teams right now. But the inexorable force of size, I think, is working in Spain's favor in this fourth quarter. Germany are hanging in, into the, in the lead, mostly with outside shooting with some good defensive plays is that one by Holler. But Spain with the dominance inside, it's not really reflected in the rebounding statistics, but the dominance inside, getting the points in the paint has really been their advantage. And Germany up by five at the end of the third quarter, but Spain on the march. And the team's coming back on the court for the fourth quarter with Germany leading Spain, 53 to 48. The Spanish, the top seeds from Group A. Germany, the fourth seeds from Group B. This would be an upset if the Germans can hang on to win. But the force of play seems to be moving in Spain's favor. Their size advantage inside there, keeping the Germans out of the paint at both ends of the court. And when Garcia is in, as the quarterback, they're getting the ball inside. Diallo, the two Zarzuelas, and Sanchez, the rest of the starting lineup for Spain as the quarter begins. And you see Diallo setting the pick for Garcia and then going on the pick and roll. Garcia gets the rebound. He misses the shot, but there's a foul after the shot, and the foul is going to be on Haluski. Right there. 
Garcia Garcia. He's been key for Spain so far. In fact, he's got nine assists and nine rebounds to this point in the game. And for, to go with 14 points. The two Zarzuelas have 15 each. That's been, been basically all the scoring for Spain. That's all but four points. Makes the second free throw. It's 53 to 49. Spain have shot 17 free throws, which reflects their dominance inside. That's where you tend to get fouled more. Grima across to Heimbach in the middle, and that will be another three-second violation, the second one of the second half, I think the third of the game. And I said sooner or later they would start calling that. want to side in after the three second turnover. Kaluski having to do yeoman work inside against the Zarzuela brothers and Diallo. Three bigs and there's Alejandro open underneath and Garcia so quick to see it developing gets the ball to him exactly as he comes over open and Zarzuela makes the basket. It's a two-point ball game now, and Passawan brings it up for Germany. Diallo cuts him off. Passawan restarts with a spin to go around Diallo, but there's Pablo to help. He throws the shot up, but knowing Burma was underneath for the rebound, and Burma draws the foul as he tries to get the ball away, and well, the Spanish were calling for a three-second violation that time. Take a look. Well, that's pretty much a foul, any way you look at it. By Pablo Zarzuela. It's only his second. Burma makes the first. And the second. Makes them both. 55, 51, eight and a half to play. And Boom is going out for a break. Bennett comes back in for him, straight up substitution. That's going to be a foul on Pasiwan, who was trying to stop Sanchez from coming back in. Or maybe it's Heimbach trying to stop Pablo from coming back in. It is Pasiwan. Garcia for three and hits. It's a one point game 55 54. Asier Garcia. The Germans are having to play inside, having to concentrate inside Garcia all the time he needed outside to hit the three. Passawan now at the foul line. Down to Haluski on the baseline. Back up to Passawan. It's a three if it goes, and it does. He answers the three with a three of his own. 58-54, just under eight minutes to play in the game. Dirk Passawan has come off the bench in both halves now to provide offense for Germany. Garcia, he shoots off the glass and hits it, 58-56. Garcia's having a monster game, 18 points now. Benek, and he's hit by Garcia as he tried to move around him, and... That foul will be Garcia's third, only the team's second. Benek inside to Passawan. It bounces off Sanchez. It bounces off Heimbeck, and it comes to Alejandro. He gives it to Garcia. Seven steals for Spain, as you can see. The pass, well, it was intended for Alejandro and two Germans, Haluski and Benek, both got their hands on it and knocked it out of bounds. 
58-56 Germany, 13 on the shot clock for Spain. Garcia again for three. That one misses and Passawan has the rebound for Germany. Benek brings it up for them. Haluski, well, you can see Garcia just trying to keep Haluski out of the forecourt. 13 on the shot clock. Benek sets for its three-pointer and it doesn't go. Pablo clears it off the boards. Had a really high bounce off the rim. Garcia. Over to Pablo. He gets a pick from his brother. Sanchez comes in as well. Garcia cross court. He's looking for Alejandro. You could almost see that developing. And Alejandro right in front of the basket. Banks it in and we're tied at 58. Six minutes to play. Six and a half. 19 for Alejandro. Benek now. Pasawan. Look at Diallo keeping Haluski off the boards. Benek now moving behind Haluski. They get it to him in just short of the foul line. Diallo got a piece of that. And Spain with possession and six minutes to go. Sanchez picking himself up behind the play. Garcia drives through the lane, stops for the short, short shot. He wanted Diallo, but Diallo wasn't there. Goes across with nine on the shot clock to Pablo Zarzuela. Sanchez is up top. Back to Garcia. He'll look inside now. He's going to take the shot. He's got rebounders there, but it goes the other way, and Haluski gets the rebound for Germany. Tied up at 58, under six minutes to play. Benek coming down. Going to have substitutions for Germany in just a minute as Holler takes off his shirt. Passawan misses the layup. They've got the ball inside to him in good position, and now there's a break for Pablo. Benex comes comes to a quick stop. Pablo wanted the foul, but he puts the basket in, and it's 60 to 58. Just approaching the halfway mark of the fourth quarter. Spain finally back into the lead. Benek on the drive kicks it out to Passawan. He hits the shot. It's good, and there's a foul. And the foul is on Diallo. Boy, he didn't have much space or time to get that shot away. But Passawan beat the space time continuum to put in the basket, tie the game up, and he's got a foul shot to put Germany back in the lead. What a battle this has been. It's been almost inexorable as Spain has pushed their way back in the lead. We stay tied at 60 as Passawan misses, and Alejandro comes up with the rebound. A forward to Diallo, and he drops it back to Garcia. Garcia, no one's picked him up yet. He's in the paint, and Passawan knocked the pass away, and here comes Benek. Both Zarzuela's back quickly to stop him from getting the, the breakaway, and Pablo fouled Haluski as Passawan was looking for Haluski, cutting to the hoop, and Pablo cut him off. And I think that might have been a jaw warning from the from the umpire asking the Pablo not comment and criticize on every every call. Holler and Bremer come in together. Benek from the outside misses everything and it's picked up by Alejandro and Spain come down with four and a half minutes to play in this game and the score tied. It's been almost inexorable from Spain. Garcia can't hit the shot. Haluski pulls down the rebound and gives it to Buma. Benek on the right side. Haluski in the middle. Buma comes up the middle. Benek now back to Buma inside, and he banks it in. 62-60 to Germany, four minutes to play in the game. Garcia calmly comes down for Spain. Sanchez has to get out of the paint and does. Pablo now from the outside and he hits. We're tied at 62. 3.45 to play. Every basket crucial here. Benek coming up now for Germany. Ahead to Burma. They've got two on two. 
Bruma moves behind Benek's screen. He cuts for the basket. Diallo's there. He misses the layup. Diallo clears the rebound. And here comes Garcia with three and a half to play. Garcia and Pablo can't hang on to it, but the foul is on Haluski. And he uses Benek's chair to get himself back up. That was a good long pass. Well, actually, the foul will be on Benek, who crashed his chair into Zarzuela's. Didn't have to do that because Alejandro couldn't control that pass. And, well, it wasn't, a, shouldn't be a shooting foul. They're not in the penalty and he wasn't shooting. He never got the, pa he never got the pass. That's very strange. He never collected the pass, so he couldn't have been in the act of shooting. They weren't in the penalty situation. It wasn't a deliberate foul. But Zarzuela makes them both, and it is 64-62 to Spain. And then the look of the concern on the coaches, the German coaches, tells it all. Because right now, as I've been saying since the half, it's, it's been inexorable for Spain. Because they've been dominating the game inside, they've been getting the easy shots and putting the pressure on Germany that way. At the three-pointer won't go, but the rebound comes to Benek. There is a foul, however, in the backcourt. And that will be the team's fourth. So I presume they won't be shooting this one as well. And no. Pablo now. Diallo setting the screen for him. Garcia wants the shot at the foul line. Gets himself set. Misses off the rim, but Diallo's there for the rebound for Spain. They get another 14 seconds. Garcia cutting in on Lohman. He's got Alejandro underneath. Alejandro off the glass. Misses and Haluski with the rebound. Can he clear it out? He does to Benek. Benek brings it up quickly. They'll try to beat the big men down the court, but they can't do it. Benek turns around now. He's really got no one to pass to. Now Haluski finally comes up. Spain did a good job of trapping him. Only five on the shot clock. Haluski's got the open shot, and it won't go, and the rebound is taken by Alejandro. And they stop the play to get Benek back up in his chair. And I think as they did, Two minutes and four seconds to play. I thought Spain may have called a timeout, but they did not. Garcia inbound. Spain leading by two with two minutes to play. Garcia again takes a position at the foul line. Sanchez trying to work for Alejandro. On the other side is Pedro. Now as the Germans shift over, that's when Alejandro usually comes in. And Pedro with another high arching shot puts it in, and it's a four point lead for Spain, 66 to 62. And now Germany take a timeout with 1.45 to play and Spain has worked their way up into the lead. It has been a grind, but they have managed to do it with 1.45 to play. And Germany now have to come up with a new plan to get themselves back in the game. The, the, it's like a tidal force for Spain. The power inside, and Germany has had no answer. They, had, they kept their heads above water. They kept in the lead with good outside shooting, but as the Spanish defensive intensity increased, as they kept Germany off the boards, a series of one shot or no shot, and then the turnovers. So trying to draw up some way of getting his players free inside. And, and really the problem right from the start has been Spain with, with the big Zarzula brothers, with Diallo, with Garcia, who's very big for a point guard, have just been working so hard on Haluski, not giving him good shots. He's had very little inside. They trap him in the backcourt whenever they can. They've done a good job of that. 
So in Germany, well, finally, the outside shooting just went cold. They're down by four now with 1.45 to go. Passawan is back in the game. So, and the foul on Diallo outside. And Spain in the penalty situation. So Bruma will shoot the foul shots. Makes the first. And again, Germany not with anyone to contest the rebound. Counting on Burma's foul shooting. Makes the second. 66-64, two-point game and a minute and a half to play. Germany need a stop on this Spanish possession. There's Alejandro and Haluski came in and blocked it cleanly from behind. 12 seconds on the shot, light, shot clock for Spain with a minute 25 to play. A big play from Haluski. Alexander on Alejandro. Garcia, Pasawan, well, he, he's between two minds, but was there to cut Garcia off. Sanchez is open inside. He hits Haluski's chair from behind. The shot is short. Just before the buzzer went, Haluski rebounded. Heim back now to Pasawan. Pasawan up quickly to Boom. A one on one with Diallo. Can he get by him? No, he cannot. But he gets the help now as all the German chairs come down. Pasawan spinning on Sanchez, spins back. Haluski now can't have a path to the basket. Blumen's shot is short, and Garcia rebounds. Spain lead by two with 46 seconds to play. Diallo has it in the middle, gives it to Alejandro. He loses the ball, but there it will be a foul on Haluski, I believe, for the push with the chair. Right there, you saw Haluski. And both teams are in the penalty situation now. Alejandro will shoot two. He misses the first. <laughs> the tension is ratcheted up here. Alejandro with the second. Everybody was in the lane. He makes the second. Diallo was the one furthest in the lane. The referees are going to let that one go. Diallo was the first one into the lane before the shot. You're not technically allowed to leave and go into the lane until the ball leaves the shooter's hand. Haluski was alone inside, and there was the foul on Alejandro to stop him getting the ball. And Alejandro has not committed a foul yet in this tournament, although the referees haven't always agreed with him. So with 34 seconds left, Haluski will shoot two. He misses the first. And I think Germany will want a timeout after the second foul shot. Misses the second. Well, it stays as a three-point game. That's still a one-possession game, but Germany need to get the ball back from Spain. And it's tipped away from Sanchez. It's a loose ball. And it's taken away from Pablo. It's a two-on-one. Burma now. Pablo was all over him. It goes into Holuski inside. And now it's a one-point game with 15 seconds to play. 67, 66, 15 seconds to play. And we've got a timeout on the court. Germany needed a turnover, and they got one, but they got the two-point basket. They're a point short now, and they will need the ball back again. <laughs> there were some chairs flying on that one. Coach Artacho now. The plan here is how you bring the ball in, how you bring it up. I'm assuming that Germany is going to come out and press. They need, you see, they're going to bring the bigs. They're going to bring the bigs into position to get the passes. Great feed. 
And Haluski with the finish. It's a one point game. Spain 67, Germany 66. Exactly what you expect in the knockout rounds here at the Paralympic wheelchair basketball tournament. Three players over 20 points each for Spain. That's 63 of their 67 points. No one else has scored in this second half for Spain apart from those three. And the quick foul. And Garcia, of course, not the guy you want to foul and put on the line, but they have no choice. Even if Garcia makes both shots, it remains a one possession game, but Germany would need to make a three point shot to tie it up and send it into overtime. And Germany will take a timeout which is mostly just to move the ball up to the half court line. Garcia calmly sinks them both, 69-66. So with 15 seconds left, Germany take a timeout. They'll get a possession at midcourt, and they'll have to work for a three-point basket. Now, it'll be interesting to see how Spain defend that, because obviously their bigs have played inside to cut off anything from the inside to Germany. And Germany, who are here, in this position primarily because of their three-point shooting in the first half. They were five for eight in the first half, but they have only been one for four here in the second half from the three-point zone. Who you want to shoot it is the question. Passawan, who's three for four. Burma, who's made his only three-pointer. Binek, who made his first two, but has now missed five in a row. And it looks like he's looking to Passawan. Okay. It's all come down to one shot for Germany. This has been a tremendous game. Spain have taken advantage of their strength. The big men, the Zarzula twins. The versatility of Garcia. They've ridden those three players all the way into this position. German shooting had them on top for most of the game, but in the fourth quarter, Spain has rallied. Benek now, well, he was inside, and it was a two that he threw up, so that wasn't going to do them much good anyway, and Holler quickly gives the foul, which is all that he can do at that point. And I'm not sure that that was what was drawn up, but Benek shooting a two-pointer didn't do them really much good. I mean, obviously they make it, they then foul quickly, try to get the ball back and hope that the shots are missed. And now Sanchez at the line. And he'll shoot two. He misses the first. If Sanchez makes this shot, it's almost impossible for Germany. And he does, it's 70 to 66. It's a two possession game for Germany, but there's only nine seconds left in the game. They don't have the timeout, the long inbound pass to Burma. He goes across, this, the three misses, the rebound to Passawan. the three is up, it misses, and Spain have defeated Germany, coming from behind to win 70 to 66. And look at the congratulations there for Spain. They cannot believe it. And Germany, while well, they played the game of the tournament for them, they won a must-win game against Brazil. They came back in the knockout stages where every game is must-win and played their best basketball of the tournament. It lasted for three quarters and then almost inexorably, as I've been saying, Spain's advantage underneath. The bigger men, the more muscle just paid off. Germany reduced to getting bad shots in the fourth quarter from the outside. Haluski gave it everything he had, but it was just an uphill battle against the Zarzuela brothers, Diallo, Garcia, 
for a short time. Ruiz in Spain with so much depth of big men just made it too difficult for Germany. And Spain are the winners, 70 to 66 in a game. Well, that score looks close, and the game was closer than the score looks. What a game of basketball, and what an effort by both these teams. And if you look at the statistical breakdown, it just swung a little.